All right, y'all, I wanna share a juicy golden tidbit with you that will help you find those juicy trade setups. Because if you take this and apply this information, you will have much more success when you are entering into some trades. And I wanna talk about how I was able to take a short from right here and then take a long from right here as well. And the reason why I wanna talk about this is because a lot of times people don't have the proper perspective when they are looking at the charts. People look at the charts as random price in random places, but if we can organize the price structure and the market structure into easily defined key areas, it will make it much easier to get into trades. Now the short from up here was very juicy. It was a trade setup I gave in advance in the VIP Discord. We were looking to take out this previous high and get bearish divergences and then come back down to the uh, low of the, of, of the range basically. And we did enter the trade, it was very, very juicy. That trade is currently still open, up hundreds of percent in profit. And then the long down here was a level that we had been looking at for a very long time as well in the VIP Discord. Going back all the way to Friday, we are looking at this level as, uh, as a level of massive confluence. Okay, at massive confluence. And so I'm currently in a long position from that level. I just hit take profit one, the trade is still open. So how did we discover these areas? When we are looking at price action, it's very important that we are able to identify clear areas that are key areas where we can expect price to have a reaction or a reversal. And the way we're going to do that is by identifying highs and lows because the old adage that your great grandpa gave you when you told him that you were getting into investing, when you told him, Grandpa, I'm, tr I'm about to get into trading. What did he say? He said, Son, let me, let me tell you the secret to trading. All right. Now, investing's pretty easy, son. All you got to do is buy low and sell high. Okay. And he's right. That's literally all we have to do. But the problem is, what defines high and low? Well, there's two things. The first thing is going to be just using our eyes. Okay, if we use our eyes, we can see pretty clearly that we have a line right here that gives us a pretty clearly defined high because since January 5th, and actually we can even go back uh, much farther and see that this, this level has been respected, you know, back in September, back in the beginning of December, but mostly in, in recent days, the past few months, since January 5th, this level has been respected as a high, meaning every time price comes to here in January and then in February and then recently in March, this level has been high, a high price where we can look to sell. This is why we were looking to take a short from that level in the VIP Discord because it was a high. We knew we were coming to a high where we could look to find resistance our indicators were telling us we were not going to be able to break the resistance. I'll get into that more later. And then we can also clearly see right down here that we have a low. Okay, we have a low. Now, you might ask yourself, Jay, you said you're long from right down here, but that is not the low. Why are you long from down there? Well, this brings me to the second aspect of defining highs and lows based on market structure and that is trading volume. Trading volume is very important because highs and lows are not only defined by lines of support and resistance on a chart, but they're also defined by fair value, fair value. When you hear people saying, oh, Bitcoin is getting overbought or Bitcoin is getting oversold, what that really means is that the asset, if it's overbought, that means the asset is trading at a price that is too high, it's higher than the fair value of that asset. For example, if let's say I was selling apples and I'm selling apples for a dollar an apple and then I raise my prices and, and people are buying them up, right? I raise my prices and now it's $1.50 an apple and then, and then the price keeps going up and then next thing you know, it's, it's $7 an apple. Okay, that, that, that is a too high of a price, okay? 
that is too high of a price. And eventually what's going to happen is somebody's going to come along and start selling some apples for cheaper. And that's going to, that's going to cause the price of the apple to go down. All right. Now this is kind of a, a very bad analogy, honestly, <laughs> that's a pretty bad analogy. But basically, when something is overbought, it means the price is too high. There needs to be a correction to get it back into a fair price. And if something is oversold, it means it's selling at a discount. The price is too low, and there needs to be a correction to get it back to a fair price. Now, in TradingView, if we come over here to the um, prediction and measurement tools, and we come down to the fixed range volume profile, this will help us if we have clearly defined highs and lows and we take this thing and we drag it through the price action, this will actually help us find very, very, um, this, this will actually give us the value area, okay? This will give us the value area. When you see these shaded candles, the blue and purple, this is telling us that this is, at least since January 5th, considered to be a fair value for Bitcoin or whatever asset we're looking at. If price, comes below that fair value, it's very likely to come back inside the fair value. And if it comes above the fair value, it's very likely to come back inside the fair value. And we can see very clearly for the past few months, when price comes below, it comes back inside. When price comes above, it comes back inside. It comes above, back inside, below, back inside, above, back inside. Now look at this. Just recently, the reason why I've taken a long from here is because we have come below that fair value okay and this is how we're going to define a fair value for the asset within a sideways range this is giving us the definition of high and low beyond just drawing the lines on the chart and if we have this down it gives us a very clear structure from which we can look for trades if i know for example that for the past few months Bitcoin has been trading in this sideways range with the fair value being defined between $44,500 and $38,000. That means when we come down to $38,000, I should immediately be saying to myself, I'm looking for a long trade. I'm looking for a long trade. Okay. And when we know we're coming to a key area, <clears throat> then we should be looking for confirmations that can get us into the trade. Now, here's the thing, guys. This is also very important. When we are looking for trades, this practice that I'm showing you can be done on multiple, multiple timeframes, right? Multiple timeframes. For example, if you are looking to swing trade, then, well, this is not even really swing trading as much as it is. It's like swingish day trading, right? Because when I took a short from up here, I didn't necessarily know we were going to come all the way down to the low of this macro range. I was first looking for us to come down to the low of a smaller range, right? And we can find ranges within ranges, right? For example, up here in this uh, chunk of price action that we traded for a few days, we can see that we also had a very clearly defined low right here and a very clearly defined high and so you can look for trades within this tiny range within the bigger range, right? So when I shorted from up here, my first take profit was down to the low of this range. And we could basically just do the same thing that we did before where we have this fair value, right? We look to take a long down when we come below the fair value, right? And that's pretty much what happens. We look to take a short when we come above it. And we could pretty much we could pretty much just do that, right? So you know we're we're, we're looking for uh, basically fair values within fair values, but we can't lose sight of the macro fair value because the best trades are always going to come at that um, at those macro areas. And if we can find confluence there, then it's going to be even better of a trade. So look at what was down here. We had the value area low. It's called the low of the value area. We also had, if we take the Fibonacci retracement tool from the low to the high, we also had the golden pocket right there. And not only that, but if we go to the weekly time frame, we had a area where the weekly candles gave us an area of support right down here. In fact, we pretty much bounced off that weekly support to the dollar, okay? 
that weekly support to the exact dollar. Like, I'm not even kidding. To the exact dollar. We bounced off of it. And um, so there were three things, actually more than that. There, there was a naked point of control there. There was a daily level. There were multiple things down at this low telling us that this was a area where we should be looking for a trade. By the way, if you want to get into the VIP Discord, where we post trade setups in advance and every single day give the juicy levels, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Jason Casper. We also have a thriving community of traders in here, all giving trade setups and juicy technical analysis, helping each other out because if I miss something, someone else will catch it. But you could see right down here, this area, this specific area was so juicy. We had a golden pocket, a naked point of control, a weekly level, a daily level, the value area low, and it was also a high volume node of a smaller range within the larger range. Because of all these things, we know that this is an area of interest. And when we know it's an area of interest, then we can look at our indicators to determine whether or not we actually want to take a trade there. So let's turn on market cipher B, which is my primary trading indicator and see what we saw as we came down to that key level of support. Okay, we're coming down to the key level of support. What do we see? Well, I'll tell you what I see on Market Cipher B. I see uneven butt cheeks on the four hour time frame. Okay, uneven butt cheeks. What are uneven butt cheeks? Uneven butt cheeks are when you have a, uh, a left butt cheek that's very big and juicy. I mean, it's just so voluptuous. You just want to grab onto it and hang on to a big chunk of that cheek. And then you got that right butt cheek over here and not so voluptuous, okay? Clearly, the glute is not firing during the squats and deadlifts. When you see this, this is telling us that not only is Bitcoin coming to a price which is oversold at the low, at the value area low of the range where it's undervalued, but it's also telling you that the market itself is bringing money back into the market and that there, there's going to be a correction here. Now, it doesn't happen every single time, not every single time, but most of the time when you see that, it means that there is going to be a correction there. Okay, now, this I like to start on the four hour time frame, go down to the one hour time frame where we pretty much see the same exact thing coming down to the 12 minute time frame, where as we're coming down to that key level of support, we see over time, the butt cheeks getting smaller. We also see the money flow coming up even all the way down to the lowest time frames. We can see as we are touching this important area of support right here, we can even see the butt cheeks getting higher as the price is getting lower, even on the one minute time frame, guys. And so this is how you're going to get that market structure and then determine whether or not you, you want to enter a, a trade right there, right? Just as when we were at the top, okay, and we took the short from the high, we saw basically the same thing uh, that we we're looking at for the long, except this time we saw upside down uneven butt cheeks, okay? We had the left butt cheek upside down, nice and voluptuous, grabbing onto that thing, and then the right butt cheek, not so much. Look at what happened here. As price made a higher high, the momentum waves on market cipher B were making lower highs. Now, this butt cheek here is extremely, extremely strangely shaped. I mean, I've never seen a more strangely shaped butt. It has one, two, three, four, five, six butt cheeks. That's okay. I don't judge. I don't discriminate against polycheekians. All right, the polycheekians out there. I don't hate, I don't discriminate against my fellow polycheekians. And when I say fellow polycheekians, am I implying I have multiple cheeks? I don't know. I don't know. But I hope you guys found this video helpful. Okay, if you want to learn how to trade like this, you can check out jasoncaspertrading.com. This course will give you the knowledge and the skills you need to become a confident, profitable trader. It will walk you through exactly how I set up my charts exactly what I'm looking for before I take every single trade. And it basically will give you that system so that you can know where to look for trades so that you can have a plan in advance so that you don't have to be constantly trading on emotion and FOMOing. And then it will tell you and show you what after you know where to look, it will tell you what to look for and determine when to enter the trade, where to put your stop loss, where to set your take profits. 
paper trading only, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a paper trader YouTuber. There's currently a 30% discount in the description of this video. A great deal. Voluptuous, voluptuous deal. Okay. Check it out now. If you found this video helpful in any way, guys, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And uh, God bless everybody in Jesus' name. And I will see y'all in the next video. Peace!